So apparently this whiskey is the whiskey of the year for 2021. But is it though? Well, welcome to First Fill. I'm Phil and I'm gonna fill you in about this whiskey. Alright, the Aaron 10. So the Aaron 10 is from the Aaron Distillery, which started in around 1995, which is actually relatively recent compared to a lot of other scotches that started in 1825. But I'd kind of say overall though, in terms of all the new distilleries that opened up, you know, you've got to look at Rasse, Adam Merkin, even all the New Zealand new distilleries that started up at the moment. I wouldn't really call this a young distillery anymore because it's sort of a lot older than a lot of these super recent ones. But about this distillery, it's technically part of the Highland region, but a lot of whiskey websites, a lot of reviewers put it in the unofficial region of the islands. And the really cool thing about the owners of the Aaron Distillery is they're starting a second distillery on the south end of the island called the Lag Distillery. And this should be really exciting because if they're anything like the Aaron, it should be good whiskey. So they started production in April 2019, so it shouldn't be long before we get to start trying some of the drams coming from there. So look out for that. So I've had a few errands since about 2015, and it seems like the distillery is getting everything right. It's like the whiskey and bottlings are getting better and better and better with each year. Unlike some other distilleries where it seems like they're getting worse and worse and worse. And to be honest, I actually haven't tried an Aaron that I haven't liked yet. So this specific whiskey was rated Whiskey of the Year by Ralphie, who's one of the big kind of Scotch reviewers on the YouTube platform. And one of the ways that he kind of decides his Whiskey of the Year is through the lens of value. But what about this 10 year old? Does it deserve the high expectations and the hype that has been placed around it? Well, let's find out by jumping in to the stats. So first of all, the ABV. Well, this is bottled at 46%. Fantastic stamp of approval for the Aaron 10. Secondly, unchill filtered. Is it unchill filtered? Well, this says on the label that it's non-chill filtered, which same thing as saying it's unchill filtered. So fantastic. Another stamp of approval for the Aaron 10. And thirdly, is it natural color or, is, or has it? had color in added. Well, this says on the label, natural color. So a third stamp of approval for the Aaron 10. And I think this says a lot about the distillery that for their kind of standard 10 year old, they're really trying to push out quality malts to the consumers. They're really starting it out strong. So yeah, say some good stuff about this distillery. And now onto the cask type and the age. So this has been aged in X bourbon casks and I believe with some of my research that it's also been aged in a little bit of refilled sherry butts and I'm not a hundred percent on this but from a few things I can see that it has which would make sense because it has some nice fruity notes which we'll get to and it's been aged in those casks for a minimum of 10 years and that is on the label so this bottle also gets the bonus point the age statement good work Aaron 10 <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the Aaron's design. I think it looks great on the shelf. I think they've done a great job since they redesigned it from its old bottles. I wasn't a huge fan of like the curly text and stuff on it before, but I think this looks great. I think it's it's just really tasteful. It's great for whiskey geeks. There's a lot of information, as we said before, with the integrity information. It's also got the coordinates of where the distillery is. Yeah, I really like the texture. The braille's really nice for the blind. And also as well, the cork's really cool. It's got these eagles, which is from the sort of origin story of the Aaron Distillery. And then also the coordinates on the side of the cork as well, which is a really nice touch. I'm a huge fan of this bottle. And it's right up there with some of my kind of top, like light bottle designs, like the Port Charlotte 10, and even the amazing bottle design from Rase, which looks incredible if you haven't seen that bottle. So I'm gonna give this bottle an A. But we know it's not all about how the bottle looks, it's how it tastes. So let's jump in to the tasting notes. So first of all, the nose. Mm. So there's some really nice sweetness about this whiskey. It's kind of reminding me a little bit of a dessert wine, like a Sauterne. But I know actually Aaron have a Sauterne cask whiskey so I'll be interested to know what that's like compared to that. I'm sure the salty one will be even more tropical. 
Um, but yeah, you're definitely getting that sort of syrupy notes, some of those honey notes, a lot of those tropical fruit, like a mango, like some ripe banana, some ripe apricot. And also, it's kind of bringing to my mind this, uh, like a, like a toffee apple. I don't know why that's come up in my head, but it has. So, um, I don't even know when I tasted that. But yeah, that's what's bringing up as well. And then behind that, you're getting some really nice oak notes, um, almost like a nice varnished wood, a really nice new table kind of thing. And now onto the palette. Mm. There's a nice little bite. It's not too sharp, you know, because it's it definitely tastes like a young whiskey, but uh, it's actually nicely rounded. Some of that sharpness is kind of rounded over. There's a lot of sweetness. Um, a lot of the same fruits coming through, dried pineapple, a lot of those tropical notes. Um, it's very well rounded and it's like this oiliness actually. And there's this really nice balance between the sweet and sour. And onto the finish. Mm. You get a lot more of these dried fruits I think in that last finish. Dried pineapple, raisins, um, and there's some of those tropical notes there too. And I'd probably say this is about a medium finish, I think. Pretty good. And on to my final thoughts. And the first one is value. Is this good value? Well, I would say definitely yes. I got this for about $79 in New Zealand. Look, let's be honest, you're gonna buy better whiskies at higher price points than this. But through the lens of value, this is when this whiskey starts to be lifted up. It's head and shoulders start to go above. A lot of other whiskies is in its category, other 10 year old standard bottlings. For the money, for the value, a great pick and a great 10 year old. And then the availability. And I'd say personally, for me in New Zealand, the availability of this whiskey is pretty good. I can get this whiskey from most of the retailers I normally buy whiskey from. Um, it can be a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes it's in stock, sometimes it's not in stock but I've generally been able to get my hands on the bottle, so that's great. Um, if it's not like that in the country where you are, you know, let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to know how available the Aaron is for you. So reachability, how often am I going back to this specific whiskey in my cabinet? Well, it's kind of personal, right? The thing is about me is I quite like bitter flavors. I like Marmite, I like stout beer, I like smoky whiskey. So I'm probably not reaching for this as much as some of my other whiskies in the cabinet, but I'm definitely reaching for it more than a lot of my other whiskies. So it's probably somewhere in the middle for me. What I'm curious about is if I'll reach for it more in the summertime, because I generally sort of tend to lean more to sweet whiskies in the summer. So that'd be an interesting one. So who is this whiskey for? And I think just like the Glen Caddam 10, it plays a really nice dance between the people who haven't had heaps of whiskey. I think it's quite, approachable, I think it's quite sweet, and the people who have had a decent amount of whiskey, the experienced whiskey drinker, I think it'd be good for them too because it's bottled at 46% and it still has a little bit bite. What I would say is on the bookend of those two groups, I probably wouldn't recommend it as much. I think someone who's just still getting to the alcohol burn of whiskey, I'd probably push them in the direction of a Glenmorangie 10 or a Glenfiddich 12, which have a similar sweet uh, profile, like the Glenfiddich 12, that honey note. But then for the more experienced whiskey drinker right on that other end, if they're still finding this bottle too youthful, I'd recommend the Aaron 18. It just levels up that complexity and it just doesn't have the same sort of youthfulness and bite that the Aaron 10 does. This is a fantastic whiskey. It's definitely one of my top whiskies I currently own right now. So what are my final thoughts about this whiskey? Well, I'm definitely happy to hop aboard the hype train of Aaron, um, and especially this Aaron 10. I think it's a well-made whiskey. It's a dependable whiskey. It has integrity, and it does everything right. It tastes great. It has a good nose and palate. But look, I'll be honest with you. It's not super complex. There are more complex whiskies out there, but for a 10 year old, for the value, this is a great whiskey, and it's definitely one that I would recommend. So what is my final score for this whiskey? Well, it's gonna be 88 out of 100. So fantastic whiskey, fantastic dram, but you're probably thinking, why is it not even higher than that? Well, it's pretty much just a personal thing. 
Um, and it comes back to that reachability thing. I'm probably reaching for the Deanston 12 or the Glen Cadden 10 over this whiskey. And that's just because I generally uh, don't normally lean to the more sweeter whiskies. And this is one of those sweeter whiskies. But I know a lot of people the opposite. They'd reach for this definitely over those two bottles. And don't get me wrong, this is a great whiskey and it's a great mark. And I would recommend anyone to try this whiskey. So thanks for watching. And this review was brought to you by my patrons. So thanks patrons for making this video possible. And if you want some cool whiskey merch, some cool whiskey t-shirts, go check out my Etsy shop down in the description below. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy. Beauty.